Welcome to the final study on the book of Isaiah. We have, by the grace of God, slowly and steadily moved through this long book of 66 chapters. And now we will look at the last section of chapter 66, which is verses 15 to verse 24. If the Lord permits, I wish to cover all of this today. Let us pray. God Almighty, your word is so wonderful and we are grateful for its counsels. We thank you for the way thou hast dealt with us and taught us to humble ourselves to repent of our sins. And thou hast taught us to listen to thy gracious voice recording the scriptures that we may be well advised as to how to overcome sins that easily beset us and live victoriously for the Lord God, our Savior, our King. Once again, we take this time to give glory to Thee through our worship and our rejoicing in the provision of Thy Word. And may You guide us to understand the things that Thou hast revealed in this last section of the book of Isaiah. We give you thanks for those who labored to bring the word of God to all those who are eagerly learning from it. We thank you for the team of brethren in Bible Witness Media Ministry. Particularly, we thank you for Brother Stephanus, who has been recently helping us with the recording, editing, and posting of the Bible study. We also thank you for those who labored before him. Throughout this series, many have rendered their help and we bring glory to thee. We also thank you for the students who learn. May you bless them. Through the learning of God's word, they may rejoice in thy truth. Oh, save us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, may the Lord be glorified as we now take time to read from verses 15 to 20. Verses 15 to 20. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with the flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouths shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Pul, and Lud, that draw the bow, to Tubal and Javan, to the isles far off that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. In these verses that we read, we see the Lord's warning against the people who have been living in sin. God here tells them that they are His enemies and He will swoop down in judgment like a fire from heaven. He shall visit them in great wrath. Take a look. In verse 15, we read, 
that the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury. Just imagine the fiery appearance of the Lord like a whirlwind boom, with a big flash of fire. The Lord will visit this world. Why? To render his anger with fury and this rebuke with flames of fire. Truly, the judgment of God is a fiery one. And the Lord is extremely displeased with those who do not repent. And when he finally comes to judge them, it will be a fiery experience for the wicked. In fact, you might want to consider what Apostle Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 7 to 9 says. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 7 through 9. 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 7 through 9. Let me read that portion for you. Paul says, in such firm and clear terms that, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Same graphic illustration of the fiery judgment as what Isaiah said. Paul also tells us that in a flaming fire, he will take vengeance on them that do not acknowledge God. And as we look into verse 16 of Isaiah 66, we read, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those who are going to be slain by the Lord will be in great numbers, fearsome wrath of God, sparing none who rebelled against Him. Verse 17, They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. And here we see the Lord depicting those who are rebellious toward him and decided to worship other things than God himself, worshiping in their gardens. Many of their gardens in Israel were dedicated to gods and deities they worshipped and the gardens became idolatrous. In a way, they will set up the altar in the midst of the gardens and they have groves, bushes which are dedicated to their deities and their worship. And so that's what the Lord says here through Isaiah. The Lord will purify these people in their gardens and uh, they will be behind one tree in the midst. They will be hiding behind the trees with their idols. And they will be also eating abominable things, unclean animals, eating swine's flesh, which is an abomination. The mouse, all these are creatures that are categorized as unclean animals in the Levitical law. And as they accept pigs and rats, in their idolatrous practices, they are rebelling against God. And when God comes against them, all these idolatrous people will be consumed together and say the Lord. So God's way of purifying the land is by destroying the wicked. 
God gave them opportunity to repent, but they wouldn't repent. And they wouldn't turn to him in faith and worship. But they moved themselves against God and worship other gods and practiced things that have been prohibited in the scriptures. And so verse 18 tells us, the Lord is saying, I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues. They shall come and see my glory. And that verse we read in verse 18 speaks of how when the Lord returns, he will unleash his judgment on Israel and all nations. And then when people see the power of God displayed in judgment, they will worship God and give glory to him. Unfortunately, the wicked who would bow their knees to worship God would be doing it in fear, but it's too late for them to escape the coming judgment. Even the enemies of God, seeing the fearsome wrath of God, would render themselves in worship, but their worship will not be accepted by God because they have been rebellious all the time. And now we shall look at verses 19 to 21, where people outside Israel are shown as coming to worship God. Verse 19, And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them into the nations, to Tershish, Pool, and Lud, that draw the bow, to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. So the Jews whom God has spared from his wrath would then become missionaries. They would go to all these places that are mentioned. Tarshish is very likely a reference to the western part of Spain. And then you have the words such as pool and lewd. Well, these could be some of the areas in the northern part of Africa, which is, of course, an area that lies south of Israel. And we have other names such as Tubal in northeastern Asia, and then Greece, and then distant lands. All these are European places which lied far from Israel. And to all these places and more, God's people will go to preach the gospel and to talk about the glory of God. By the way, I was just thinking that I should probably explain the word Javan in verse 19 as a reference to Greece. Okay, so now in verse 20 we see that they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And the Lord predicts that even people from all these nations that are mentioned in verse 19 will come to worship God and they will strengthen the hands of the Jews who serve God and worship God and they give their offerings to the Lord. How amazing it is that God is able to bring a rebellious people in obedience to Him and to worship Him. And we also read in verse 21, and I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. Now that is very interesting. When nations of the earth turn to the Lord Jesus Christ at his coming, they will be even accepted to serve in the new millennial temple that God have in Jerusalem. Some of them will be selected as priests and Levites. And that way the Lord shows that even the nations, the heathen nations will be blessed through Israel who bring the word all around the world. 
Well, we remember God's promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, and in him all nations shall be blessed. These things are going to be fulfilled toward the end of times. Now we look at the last three verses of this book, verses 22 to 24. Now verses 22 to 24. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Here we are firstly told of the new heavens and the new earth, which the Lord will make. And so toward the end of times, after the, the period of millennial reign of Christ, there will be new heaven and new earth. This world will be burned away and a new heaven and new earth shall appear. And there is no doubt about it because God says He will make. And this is not a refurbished earth. This is not a renovated earth. It is a totally new heaven and earth. And so what we see today will vanish and something new and glorious would come. And the Lord says to Israel at the end of verse 22 that your seed and your name will remain. God will preserve his people. And as we know, what happens in the last days is that Israel will return and they will accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah and then the Lord will come and restore them as a nation. The Lord will reign over them for a thousand years in peace and prosperity. He will rule over them. And toward the end of all, that reign of Jesus Christ, the new heaven and new earth will appear. When the new heaven and the new earth will appear, the Lord will continue to show mercy to the faithful promises He gave. That is to say, the Lord will mercifully fulfill the promises He made to Israel and they will be there to worship Him. And because of their restoration and the testimony for the Lord, all flesh shall come, meaning all nations will also be amazed by the Lord's redemptive work among the Jews they will come and worship God too. And so in verse 24, what we read is that, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. So what happened to the rebellious one who didn't want to change? Well, they fall to the ground. They will die. The Lord will destroy them. And people will see the carcasses of men who transgress against God. And they will also see that nobody attend to them. Everyone fears the Lord in those days and they do not want to show mercy or any kind of favor for the ungodly who are killed by God's wrath. As a result, these bodies that lie around will be soon eaten by worms and we are told their worms shall not die, neither shall the fire be quenched and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. It is not only a reference to what happens on this earth, but also eternal hell where they will be tormented by all the fearsome creatures of hell. And so we are given a very stern warning at the end of the book of Isaiah that do not in any way diminish the severity of God's judgment that is going to come soon. For those preachers and Christians who say God will not punish anyone in hell, think again, the Bible clearly says, even in Isaiah chapter 66, that there will be hell, there will be suffering, which God has warned us beforehand. And let's therefore fear the Lord, avoid sin, and serve our King with great vigor 
knowing that the day of judgment is coming, we do not want to be caught unaware in our sin and our guilt and be punished, but we want to be faithful servants of God, serving Him and rejoicing in Him now and forever. So, dear brethren, as we see the end of this series of study from the book of Isaiah, let us fear the Lord and let us make sure we have nothing against our Lord and His Word and bow ourselves to the Lord and worship Him because any rebellion will result in great wrath of God. We do not want to be vessels of His wrath. This is the day of salvation. This is the day of mercy. This is the day when you can turn to Him and find His grace. Let's receive it and give thanks to God for the undeserving salvation He has given to us. Let's rejoice. And at the same time, let us have a commitment to warn the ungodly, lest they may be taken all of a sudden by the wrath of God. May God make us effective witnesses for Him in the days ahead. Thank you for joining me in the study of the book of Isaiah. We will update you how we will go forward with the study on Wednesdays. For about a month, I'm going to take a break. I will be traveling quite a bit. God willing, I will be seeing you maybe in the month of July. So it could be more than a month that I will be off this series. And uh, we pray that the Lord will bless you. Meanwhile, our church has um, a church camp coming up uh, in June 13 to 17. I'm preparing for it. It's on the topic of joy, as the scripture says, let my saints rejoice. So we welcome you if you are free to join us. And may the Lord bless you till we meet again.